So last week I showed the new shop lift that I picked up recently that needs a set of batteries. And I mentioned that I could potentially place replace the batteries that are in this with a set of car batteries. And the comments <laughs> told me that that was not a good idea. Several people said, don't use car batteries. They just won't hold up. Use deep cycle glass mat batteries like the unit was designed to have originally. And you'll be happy with it. Otherwise, car batteries just won't hold up for you. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick up a new set of batteries for this thing and you know, try to get that behind me. They are a little pricey, but, you know, you may have to buy a set of car batteries two or three times. So it's probably going to be the buy once, cry once. You know, put the right batteries that it's designed for in it and instead of potentially having to replace a set of car batteries every, every year or so, which is my experience around here anyway. So I've only had this thing for about a week, and I've found what little I've used it. It's just extremely useful. As long as I can keep it out of my way in the downtime that I'm not using it, man, there's very few downfalls to owning one of these. So there's my parts washer. I want to be able to use this thing because they are so handy. Um, not that it's going to live in this spot and don't necessarily like it being next to the surface plate, but that doesn't mean the surface plate's going to stay in this position either. So everything's kind of still in limbo as far as it's uh, the shop organization, but I want to use this thing. So let's fill it up because I've got the, the solution for this and uh, see if it works because I've never tried this. It was a viewer gift and I got it maybe a year ago. So there's a look inside. Most of these little parts washers are built very similar. you got a soaking tray, which is nice. So your small parts in, in this and then set it down in the solution for a while. I'm going to be using the Purple Power, the same uh, degreaser that I used to clean the drill press, and it really works pretty well. It's not as good as, uh, it's not as, good as mineral spirits, but you know, it's also not near as expensive either. A um, little tray here to work on, and then... You know, all your crud usually falls to the bottom. And there's your pump, and this is the brush that is fed by the pump. So you get a constant flow of solution over that. So pretty good. So there's a look at the degreaser that I'm going to use. It's made by ZEP, Concentrated Industrial Purple Degreaser and Cleaner. It says it makes up to 120 gallons, this 5-gallon, but that would be pretty dilute. So we're going to use the majority of this in here um, in you know, it works best pretty concentrated. That's what I did on the uh, drill press anyway. You know, probably 50-50, and it worked pretty well. So let's get this in here. Please don't leak all over the place. I should turn this over. There we go, that's better. So that's probably plenty of degreaser. I'll put some water in there as well and save some of this for use in a spray bottle. So this thing's plugged in. Let's see if it actually works or not. I need to put some water in here, but we'll do that later. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to put some water in there. It's not enough. Uh, let's see if this thing works. Wow. Yeah, it works. So I just did a 50-50 mix. 50% 50 water, basically, by 50-50. That's a powerful stream. <laughs> we'll let that run and mix it up a bit. Yeah, I'm going to put all this stuff in there.
So I figured I would take a few minutes and clean up the table on this new, to me anyway, Strands, Duval, Wilton, a Swedish made drill press that I got a couple weeks ago. And I'm using a standard shop stone with some white gas just to knock all of the divots or the dings down to make it a nice flat surface. Now this table's not perfect. A lot of people mentioned that it has an arc of shame on it or some apprentice holes, uh, some would call it. And they asked me if I was going to fix those, and the answer is yes and no. I'm not going to fix any of them that aren't all the way through the table, which means I'm going to repair two of them because that's how many through holes it has. Uh, simply because I don't want the coolant to drip through those holes onto the foot, onto the floor, make a mess. And I'm not going to do any welding to repair those. Um, we'll go over the process that I plan to use here in the near future, but... Uh, other than the appearance, uh, those few little holes don't hurt anything. So I want to check the condition of the Morse taper number three socket on the end of the spindle and see if it's in good shape or not. Um, so let me change the camera angle. I'll show you how I'm going to do that, how I'm going to get this chuck out and look up in that spindle and see if it's scored up or if it's in good shape. I'm, I'm curious to, to find out. So you can see there's a uh, slot in the spindle there, and we're going to rotate this till we can see all the way through. And I can see the tang of the Morse taper number three arbor that's shoved up in the spindle there. And the way we're going to get that out, because it's just a uh, friction fit in there, is with our wedges. So I'm just going to slide this in there. This wedge is not... This wedge is kind of beat up. Let me straighten this thing up before we before we do anything with it. So this is kind of bent, and in order to get that to straighten up, I'm gonna put it on this piece of track and give it a smack here. Huh? It helped. You have to actually bend it past straight again in order to, to not get it to spring back, so that's why we got the washers there. A little more. straight enough. So just for reference, you can see you have a rounded top up here. Well, that's where the rounded part of your wedge goes. You don't want to put it in like this. You can put it in rounded to rounded. I'm glad I took it out. Not in perfect shape, but people kill me. So actually it looks pretty good, the, the spindle of this. It's in perfectly good condition. I would run a reamer up in there if I had one. I don't. I need to pick me up a Morse taper number three uh, finish reamer just to knock off a couple little high spots that I see there. Um, maybe in a line or so where something's spun, but not. it's not in bad shape. But this is in really bad shape. Let me let me show you why it's in bad shape. You know, somebody should not have ever have stuffed that in there. But you know, if you don't know, you don't know. So let me let me show you, and then if you didn't know, you'll know. So I'm glad I pulled that out of there. Wow, this is in really bad shape. You can see how all the beat beat marks on it. Somebody's tried to knock a chuck off of this arbor. Uh, with a hammer, when in reality they're supposed to be removed with a set of wedges. But, you know, I guess you use the tools that you have, but unfortunately they probably damaged the chuck, they damaged the arbor, and then they shoved this up in the spindle and could potentially damage it as well, all uh, to avoid getting a set of wedges. So, you know, if you don't know, you don't know, and that's just the way it works with all this old machinery, but that's why I check everything as well, because you just never know what's been done to them. So, I mean, we could probably stone some of that out, but man, it's pretty bad where they've hammered on it here, and it's unlikely that this will stay up in that spindle. So we've got a good one here. We'll just uh, use it. It's in good shape. It'll be fine for now. It should hold. We'll see how it feels. So let's... Uh, Press that in there a little harder. So 
I'm just gonna, obviously the jaws are totally retracted on the, uh, on the chuck and I'm just gonna use the spindle the tables all locked. Just to make sure that that arbor's pressed up in the spindle, good. And long as the run out's not bad, you know, and it holds, it would probably be fine, but I am gonna get a reamer and run up in there because it does need it. So the chuck that I pulled out of this drill and the one that I shoved back up in there are exactly the same model. Um, both old American made Jacobs 14 in super, uh, super chucks, ball bearing super chucks, which are my favorite key drill chuck, to be honest, um, because of their size ranges right in the ballpark of what we, most of us use, anywhere from pin drills up to 13 millimeter, half inch. These, because of the ball bearings, you can get them pretty tight and they don't slip as bad as some of the other chucks. Uh, because there's less friction when you crank it down with a key. But just a good design chuck, really. So I'm going to have to get a replacement for this because actually I used used this in the tailstock of my lathe with an adapter sleeve um, to take it up to uh, four, Morse taper number four. So good chuck, nothing wrong with that. But man, they really, uh, they really shanked that uh, barber. So I'm cleaning up a few parts in the parts washer that my buddy Al had dropped off in a box of auction scores that he had got some time ago. And in one of those boxes, a really nice made in America, you know, Ohio actually, uh, right up north from me, wheel resurfacer, a grinding wheel resurfacer for your bench grinder. It needs a set of a set of ends or wheels for it, but otherwise the handles good it lasts 17 lifetimes so just cleaning it up surprisingly nice under all of that grease and this uh, zep purple degreaser works pretty good as long as you let your parts soak in it for a few minutes before you try to scrub them off so really happy with this parts washer and the coolant through brush is a must have in my opinion so this will make life easier for me and uh, less messy So I figured for now I'd put this uh, arbor press up on the on the table here to start getting some of my stuff off the floor. Finally, man, you can't have too much too much tabletop space. This will be fine. I'll scoot it to the back. It'll be out of the way. I don't, I'm not going to be working that far back on the table anyway. So feels good to start putting things together. So every time I go to move this press, it's a pain. It's top heavy, it's awkward. I have to hook this cherry picker to it. Um, so I'm gonna hook some casters to the feet of it, which I've done before, but they were too big, the casters were. And I've got some small ones, and I'm gonna drill through the angle iron feet here, the legs, and mount them. That way I can move this thing around, at least for now, until I get the until it's in its final position, then I'll take them off. But let's hook these to it so I can move this thing around without having to struggle with this thing. So the casters that I'm using on this thing are really too light of a duty caster to hold this thing, you know, indefinitely. So what I'm going to do is put some threaded rod with some uh, machine pads below the holes that you can see right beside the thing that I'm tapping, or the hole that I'm tapping there, uh, that will actually take the weight when this press is in place, and then I can just easily let it down uh, to set it on the casters and move it where I, wherever I want it.
Oh, come on. <laughs> what are you doing, girl? Hmm? What are you doing? I just broke a tap, and I need to pet you and calm down. What do you think about that? Yeah, so that sheared right off. Um, this stuff is really gummy. Man, it feels like you're tapping chewing gum. So I'm going to try to get it out. At least it broke off proud of the hole. Let me use this little Baco Swedish made adjustable wrench, which are awesome adjustable wrenches. The best I've ever, ever encountered, really. They're extremely well made. The problem is the screw's backwards on them. At least it's backwards to me. From every other adjustable wrench that I've seen, you know, the, the movement is backwards, but it doesn't matter. Still extremely tight and uh, good quality. Let's see if we can get it out of here. Huh. Yep. Come right out. Well, let's talk too soon. get a pair of needle nose, I think, or a smaller pair of pliers. There we go, I think. Yeah. Well, that worked out. Literally. Let's see if we can do it again. That tap kind of felt a little, a little dull, so I think that didn't help anything. So I believe the reason why that little tap broke is just I wasn't in line with the whole good. Especially hand tapping these smaller taps. Just If you're not perfectly in line, they bind up and you put a little extra, a little too much force on them. A little off to the side and there they go. Snap. But at least I got it out. That's the main thing. These are 10, 24 threads. There's that. There we go. It's good for now. So I'm making a hard push with what little time I have to work at the shop this week to get the roof up over my rotary phase converter and my air compressor. Those who watched last week's video would have seen me and Al move the big compressor under the tarp out and put it on the concrete pad, and it needs to be protected from the elements, so i got to build a, a roof over top of the two. Now, anybody who's watched this project for any amount of time knows that my ground is 99% rocks and 1% dirt, so anything that involves digging also requires a jackhammer so this is just a post hole that will be filled with concrete and then my posts that will support the roof that i'm building over these two units will be attached to that
So we'll, we'll, we'll get that down, I don't know, two, three feet, get it big as a uh, dinner plate or something. Be plenty, plenty enough. Yeah, you just grab it, throw that stuff out. That should be plenty enough to anchor this in. If we got three of those, obviously, be plenty. So like I mentioned in last week's video, a post here is problematic. It's right in the path. I mean, it'd be about 91 inches from the wall. So that's right there, you know, right in the, in the way. If I decide that I'm gonna go all the way over the door, which I really would like to do. So what I think that I'm gonna do is just skip the post here and then come off of the building with a, uh, with a 45. Uh, to support the end of the roof here. That will support it from both snow load and from lift as long as it's attached properly you know to the wall and, and to the roof. That's the idea anyway. I think that'll work. So let me give you a quick overview of the hardware that I'm using and why I'm using the things that I'm using to build this roof that's going over my rotary phase converter and my uh, air compressor. So I'm going to reuse the posts because I already have them that I, that I bought for this temporary support wall. Now these are pressure treated four by fours and technically you should be able to bury this in the ground and it should last a pretty long time. I see people bury them. I see people put these down in concrete. I don't like that method. I, almost everyone I've ever seen over time, they rot off. It's just not, for one, this is not the best lumber ever. And for two, you know, putting it down in concrete is basically putting it in a cup that will be eventually full of water and we don't want that. So this will be the way that I attach my post to the concrete. So I'm going to pour that hole that I've dug back there full of concrete, attach these brackets and attach my 4 before to the brackets. And everything that I'm using is rated for treated lumber. So these are hot galvanized fasteners and they'll secure everything together. These will be tap conned to the concrete, so they shouldn't go anywhere. This will be actually a three post uh, roof in the back, but only two uh, will be you know, in contact with the ground. The other one will be angled off the side of the building. So the joist hangers that I'm using, I'm not for sure that I got the right ones, but these will work. This is just a mock-up of what I'm doing. There's the angle. And I chose this angle because of the length of the roof, how far I wanted it to go out, and uh, just for ease of construction, I just chose uh, that's 20 degrees. No, it's 13 degrees, sorry. Anyway, this is the joist hanger. This will hang off of the top of the uh, uh, header that I've got attached to the building. So this will sit on top of that. My joist will come down or my purlin, whatever you want to call it. I don't know the technical terms for all these. I'm not a construction guy. But anyway, it'll sit in there like that. And the reason I had to cut that groove out is so, wow, little Bubba's having a hard time out down there. Had to cut this groove in there so this gets good contact on the bottom because of that angle of this bracket and so it doesn't stick up proud of the top of that header beam because my plywood's got to go back to the top of the roof and then my uh, drip edge or uh, whatever's got to go over top of that so I need this to not be proud. So that's what I'm using. All this is like I said attached with the with the hot dip galvanized screws so it doesn't rot off because that pressure treated stuff is corrosive.
Perfect. So there we go. That shouldn't have any problems at all holding this post to the ground. Now, the bracket will get mounted obviously here and then the post it, and then this will be covered in gravel. So you really won't see this junction where the two come together. You know, and if a post does get rotten at the bottom, it's a lot easier to change like this than if the post was set in the concrete. These are just my opinions, um, but my experience with posts in the ground has never been really good, treated or not. Not long term, anyway. This concrete will be here from now on. So I didn't show inside of these holes, but what I did down towards the bottom is open them up similar to an upside down mushroom. That way this concrete's pretty well locked in the ground, not to mention all the rocks that are protruding out into the hole and stuff. So this should have no problem at all holding this section of roof down. In the future, I may enclose the whole thing, but for now, I'm just going to make a... All I'm worried about at the moment, actually, is just to keep it dry. I can worry about sheltering it from the wind later. So I'm having to modify these joist hangers just slightly. I'm adding a couple extra fastener holes to them because I can't get to the two holes on the top of this joist hanger because of my drip edge that I've already installed. I'm putting a couple extra fastening holes in the front of it just to make me happier and probably would be perfectly fine as is you get the idea I can modify them so I do Can you hand me one of those, please? Thank you. Can you hand me another one, please? Thank you. Thank you. 
regular. Okay, just go out towards between that ladder and that mixer. Okay, I'll sit down for just a second. Move this ladder a bit. Hold on to it there. Okay. Oh. Okay, just push. Oh. All right, that's good. That's good. Um, can you get that ladder and scoot it over here and push a little? Right on the back of it? Yeah, I've got this held. See if it'll set up there good. Don't fall. Okay, thank you, Bub. I got it. We'll get another piece here in just a second. It'll be easier once I get a couple of these up here. Yeah, I should be able to stand on it. Yeah. Uh, that needs pushed over that way, but that's all right. Uh. Thank you. Uh, hold on to that. Built up here. Thank you. Um, yeah. Um, it should have some, but put to put a good handful in there in one of the smaller front pockets. Just throw them up. Just one at a time, please. <laughs> throw it underhand. Throw it underhand. You got it. Just, just relax. Good job. Thank you. No. Am I? No. Oh, sorry. Oh. So, what you're saying is I'm hitting the boards. I'm good. I was like, what? I know I pulled my string off a little because I missed one at the top, so I just adjusted. Do you still work, camera? I sure hope so. You Can you push it harder? There you go. Keep going. Yeah, that's it. Okay. I just got to trim that edge a little. Yeah, I got to trim that edge. It's real close. There we go. Okay, excellent. Can you bring that ladder over here? You could, but you don't want to. Right over here? Yeah, that's fine right there. No, no, not that far. It's right here. 
where I can get down, scoot it over here a little closer. That's fine, just hold on to it. So off and on all week I've been using the little four and a half inch Rockwell skill saw that was sent to me by Chris Claus last week. And because of its weight and size, I was a little skeptical on how well this thing would do, but I was pleasantly surprised that you can easily bury the blade as deep as this thing will allow, and it doesn't bog down, it runs like a champ. It's a great tool to have, and I'm glad to add it to the collection. It sure has come in handy for me the last week. So that's looking pretty good as far as I'm going to get on this structure this week anyway. Uh, three of the four sheets of plywood are up. I've still got one section over the door that, I'm, that I need to do, and I'm going to do it in its own little, own little piece. So everything is treated lumber on this except for the plywood. Um, it's going to be braced like you see here. That's just temporary, but this thing's pretty sturdy already. Um, all the fasteners between the posts and the structure are three inch Simpson strong ties that are rated for pressure treated lumber. The posts are attached to the ground with the hot dip galvanized brackets, eight Simpson three inch strong ties, and then the brackets are attached to the concrete with eight quarter inch uh, tap cons. So this is should be plenty good, especially after it's braced up and, and stuff and we don't get a lot of wind back here. Gonna have gutters on it as well because I don't want a trench cut in front here and then in the future you know we may box this in but for now i'm just interested in keeping this stuff dry but speaking of dry it looks like it's going to rain so i need to get a tarp over this uh, plywood before that happens because i don't have my membrane down yet so still a lot to do on it but it's came along pretty well so the structure over the rotary phase converter and the air compressor is looking pretty good i'm actually surprised that i got as far along on it as I did, considering I've only worked on it one full day and then a few afternoons after work. So I'm thinking maybe two more days, three more days, uh, and, and I'll have it complete. There's still a lot to do. <laughs> still got to build the four by eight section over the door and the post that supports it, the membrane or the vapor barrier, and then the shingles and the gutters, because I don't want a trench cut right in front of it from all the rain that we get around here. Also want to put some lights under that thing because it's relatively uh, dark under there. We'll see. Used mostly lumber that was left over from this project um, and it's almost been a year to date. I don't get into anniversaries and subscriber numbers and all that but or keep track of dates all that well but it has almost been a year today uh, that I started on this project and I'm just blown away that I've made made it this far in this amount of time, considering how much work it was to get this place back straight again. And any new viewers, look back in my videos about a year, eight months, and you'll see what this place actually looked like. It really needed push down. It's coming together, but it's still kind of rough, but won't be long. Everything will be organized and clean and stowed away in its proper place, and that will be nice. Uh, to work in a shop that is actually uh, not falling down. So I think that's it this week. Pick up one of these little tools if you want a tool to add to your list. This little four and a half inch uh, circular saw. Man, that thing is awesome and handy, light, easy to use. If you notice behind me, there is a tarp. And under that tarp is something that I want to share with you, but I don't have time to do it this week. So hopefully next week it's exciting. So. That's it, I think. Uh, thanks to my viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's supported me on this project, anybody who continues to support me uh, over time. I appreciate it more than you know. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Since the day